Hello my sewing bees, I'm Suki and welcome to my channel. In today's video we are going to dive into the world of marking pens and pencils. We're going to talk about what they are, do a countdown of the most popular, and show how to use them. And if you stay to the end, I'm going to share with you my biggest lesson when using a particular marking pen. Alright, let's get started. What are marking pens and pencils? Well, depending on what you're making, there is very often the need to place a small mark on your fabric. These pens and pencils are especially designed to work with fabrics so they can be removed afterwards. There are dozens of marking pens and pencils on the market. So this countdown, which by the way is in no particular order, I have broken it into types. By the way, always read the instructions since not all marking pens and pencils are created equal, even if they look the same. To see a complete list of what I'm showing you here today, check the links in the description below. There are two different categories we're going to talk about today, pens and pencils. Let's go ahead and start with pens first. Let's begin with number one, which is wash away. I really like the Dritz Mark Be Gone, but I'm not a fan that the cap won't stay on. I don't know why, but that does bother me. I'm just going to go ahead and draw a line for this so that you can see how thick it is. The next is the Leonis Water Erasable Pen. Ooh, and I really like how the cap does stay on the end of the pen. Now this comes in a package of either 5 or 10 depending on how you buy them. And I really like how thin the mark is for this. And then the last is the Dritz Dual Purpose. Now it has a disappearing on one side and the same mark be gone on the other. However, I do think that the Mark Be Gone that I used at the end is a little thinner, but according to the packaging, it's the same. Now let's go ahead and take a look and see how easily these do wash away. Now I'm just using tap water and a Q-tip, but you could use a sponge or you could throw it in the washing machine. It's really entirely up to you. And I can't say this enough, but always test it on a scrap piece of material that is exactly like what you're going to use for your project. After just one pass of water, it looks like it washed away pretty good, but let's go ahead and iron it, essentially drying it, so that we can see if the marks do come back. Alright, that one looks pretty good. Next up is the Leonis Water Erasable. All right, well that one not so good. I do still see a little bit of the marking on it. And now let's take a look at the Dritz Dual Purpose Mark Be Gone. And wow, I still see that one quite a bit. Again, even though it says it's the same as the original Dritz Mark Be Gone. So let's go ahead and do a little bit more water removal. So now let's check out what happens after we dry it, again trying to get rid of the moisture of the water. And it looks much better for the Leonis Water Erasable. Let's check out that Dual Purpose Mark Be Gone by Dritz. Yep, I think it did a really good job. Number two on the countdown is the white wash away marking pens, ideal for dark materials. We've got the Dritz Mark Be Gone. And this one has a felt tip and just like the other Dritz, the cap doesn't stay on. <laughs> now I'm gonna go ahead and draw a couple of different thicknesses and in the instructions it does say to mark it and give it a minute to appear. But if you want even like a heavier, thicker white line, then just mark several times and you'll see that that appeared thicker and 
quicker. The other one is the Clover White Marking Fine Pen. This is just like a ballpoint pen, and I do like how the cap stays on. And this is a really, really thin line. So same thing applies. You gotta give it just a minute to appear. I feel like this one appeared faster and I can draw a really thin line. Now let's take a look and see how easily they wash out. Now let's go ahead and dry it with the iron and see how much or if there's any left over. I do see a tiny little bit, but honestly that wouldn't bother me at all. Let's try the clover. And that one, I don't see anything, so I'm very happy with the results. Now on with the countdown with number three, which is the air erasing marking pens. First up is the other end of that Dritz dual purpose. This is the disappearing ink. And I really like the felt tip, but the cap doesn't stay on the other side. <laughs> the next one is the Leonis Air Erasable Pen. And just like the blue one, this comes in packages of either five or 10 and the cap stays on really nice. And it is a very thin mark. And the last of the air erasable is the Clover Air Erasable Marker, and on the other end is an actual eraser. Now, one side is the purple marker, and the other is the air erasing, and the cap does fit on. This is actually too thin of a line, so I have to go back and forth several times to leave the mark on the material. But I suppose there definitely would be a good use for it. And I really like that on the other end, it has the eraser. So there's no need to add any water or wait around for the mark to disappear with air. Now, depending on what kind of climate you live in, the mark may stay a little bit longer or disappear faster. We are in Florida, it is very humid here. So my marks typically only last up to about an hour, maybe not even that long. So if you do need them to come out sooner, just because of wherever you're living or you just wanna get rid of it, just go ahead and add a little water. We'll just kind of treat it just like the wash away because that's essentially what it is. It's the moisture in the air that is removing those marks. I do think it's kind of funny how when you add the water, it actually gets darker at first. So don't let that get you all panicky it will eventually come out. Just add a little bit more water. I really do like how the Clover Air Erasable Marker has the eraser on the other end. That to me is such a huge benefit. There's no need to add water or even wait around for it to disappear. You can make it disappear right away. All right, so let's take a look at the first one. The Dritz Dual Purpose Disappearing Ink seemed to do really well. Let's see how the Leonis Air Erasable Pen did. Yeah, looks good too. And of course, last but not least is the Clover Air Erasable Marker with the eraser on the other end. And that's a winner as well. Number four in the countdown are heat away marking pens. And ironically, these were originally sold at the office supply store, but some sewers discovered how they could be useful for sewing. They come in two different styles, a fine point, and of course the cap just clicks on the other side, and then also a highlighter. You'll notice that I had to go back and forth several times to get a thicker line. Now the highlighter one is just like a highlighter, so you can make it thick or thin depending on what you're doing. On the other end of a friction pen is an eraser. Now this works really great on paper, but not so great on fabric. It kind of like distorts the grain, so I would probably discourage you against doing that. 
But friction pens are designed to be moved from heat. And within a split second, look at that. The marks are truly gone. Now let's take a moment to talk about climate. If you are in a very warm place, then when you add the heat to the friction pen on your fabric, it's gonna go away and it's gonna stay away. However, if you live in a cool climate, guess what? Your mark can come back. To get rid of it, just add a little heat to it once again and it should stay away for good. But if you do have marks come back often, I would probably encourage you to try another marking pen solution. Now let's move on to pencils so we can continue with the countdown. And number five is the wash away pencils, which are really made of clay and wax. And these are from Clover. It comes in a package of three, white, pink, and blue. And you just sharpen them with a regular pencil sharpener. You can get them really, really sharp, but I do think it's worth mentioning that sometimes the lead on it does crack a little too easily. Just use water like you were using it earlier on the pens to help remove the markings. I personally haven't found that the markings come out really great, but with a little persistence and a little extra water, you can remove the markings. This is great though for garment making where it's maybe the inside of a dart, which will never be seen. Number six on the countdown are ceramic lead pencils, and these are from the Soline brand. The first one I'm gonna share with you actually has three different color options, black, white, and pink, and has an eraser on the other end. It's just like a mechanical pencil, so the lead just pushes out, and if you hold it nice and tight and get it lined up, you can just pop it back in. It's very easy to change out the lead. The next one is just a singular color. It comes with white, but you could absolutely get different colors for it. I've seen even yellow as an option. And the top has an eraser that just pops out, just like a regular mechanical pencil, and you can just pop it back in a place and screw it down. You can also get an actual eraser, and I've had mechanical pencils my whole life when I was doing fashion design and, and when I do my sketching. I actually do use an eraser that looks similar to this. And then of course, like I said, there is refillable pencil lead. Now what's nice about the three colors is that it does come with the white, the black, and the pink. So within one pencil, you can mark on light or dark colors. And the singular one just has one color. Now this ceramic lead is supposed to be removed easily with using the other end, which is the eraser. I found with the white, it erases pretty good. Check it out. And also the same for the pink. Not bad. Now let's go ahead and check out the eraser for the single color, which we did the white. And it erases pretty good. I'm very happy with that. I still see a little, but not so bad. Now with the white pencil, let's use the eraser that you can purchase separately. Now, I gotta be honest, I'm not a big fan of these eraser shavings, so definitely take that into consideration. And last but not least, we did the black on the light color material. Let's check it out and see how it erases. I feel like I had to erase a long time and it's still there. So if I have to be honest, I'm not really a big fan of this unless I don't care about it being there forever and ever. Sometimes you're working on a project where it's never gonna be seen anyway, so it's okay. And it might be nice to have a darker line, but even with water and even with adding some heat, that mark is still there. So definitely take this into consideration. And last but not least is number seven, chalk. I think pretty much everyone who has sewn for a significant period of time has used chalk in one way or another. 
I really like these Clover Choco liners. They are refillable. It's really easy to get. You can buy them in different colors. However, I've had mine for several years and I've never had to refill them. They leave a really nice clean line and it has like a little tracing wheel effect. And I just, I've really liked mine. The next type of chalk is Taylor's chalk. They come in lots of different colors. They look like little triangles and they mark real easily. And the last is a super cool little invention there by Dritz and it's called Chalk Cartridge Set. It's a four millimeter refillable chalk and it does come with a, a little pencil sharpener so that you can sharpen and get a really nice point. And it comes with a little refillable package that has lots of different colors. I've had mine for several years and I still have plenty. I do like that there's different colors that you can refill it with real easily. It's kind of got like a mechanical pencil type method to inserting it. The lines can be very fine. Chalk is typically very affordable and it should just kind of wipe off but it doesn't always. So whatever you're marking, you want to, again, do a little test swatch to make sure it's gonna come out. If it doesn't come out, you can try the old wash away method, but I would really caution you to know exactly where you're marking with chalk. If it's 100% cotton material, it should brush off, but it doesn't always. As you can see here, none of them really came out completely. Now we can go back and we can add a little extra water to see if the marks will come out. But depending on what you're doing, definitely want to keep this in consideration. My history of using Taylor's chalk was always in the costume world and I always used it on the inside of the garment when I was doing fittings. So the marks never really mattered. Just keep all these things in mind. Now, as promised, I'm gonna share with you the biggest lesson I learned when using a particular marking pen. That would be the friction pen. The idea is that you mark this on your fabric and that it can be removed with heat. So I did a little gift for a friend up in New York. I made it here in Florida. And of course we are filled with lots of heat in Florida and lots of moisture. So by the time the little gift made its way up to New York, that mark, randomly reappeared. So I had them go ahead and put an iron on it and that removed the mark again. But isn't that crazy that the cold air outside removed all the heat and then it came back. So definitely keep that in mind where you're going to be sending your embroidered or sewn gift when it's all finished. Well, I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, be sure to give me a thumbs up and let me know in the comments what is your favorite marking pen or pencil. And until I see you next time, I hope you have a creative day. Bye-bye.